you know i keep calling our state the state of telangana startup state of india and i keep calling it the most successful startup in independent india the reason why i say this is because if you look at the performance of the state of telangana in the last eight and a half years it is nothing short of uh, uh, stellar the day we assumed office in the new state on the 2nd of june in 2014 the per capita income of telangana was 1 lakh 24000 rupees today as we speak the per capita income of telangana is 2 lakh 78000 rupees it's a humongous jump and the national average just so just to put things in perspective for you the national average is still only 1 lakh 49000 rupees the gsdp of telangana was 5 lakh crores in 2014 today it is 11.55 lakh crore so that kind of tells you how well telangana has evolved over the last eight and a half years just if i have to sum up in one line as to how well telangana has done if you look at us geographically we are the 11th largest state if you look at us population wise we are the 12th largest state in india among the 28 states but in terms of our contribution to economy and gdp while while we are only two and a half percent of india we contribute to five percent of india's gdp literally we are punching double our weight it's like a 50 kilo boxer punching in a 100 kilo category if you you surely know what i mean the point i'm trying to make is as a state as a new state telangana has not only done well on a single front but we are one of those rare states where holistic and integrated development has happened over the last eight and a half years and it truly shows with the kind of recognitions we keep receiving from government of india when government of india recently announced sansad adarsh gramin yojana the best villages among sansad adarsh gramin yojana out of the top 20 villages in india 19 were from telangana that goes to show you the stellar work that has been done in the rural development and panchayati raj areas in the village development program of government of telangana when swachh sarvekshan awards were announced for urban local bodies municipalities telangana had gotten received 26 awards second highest for any state in the country after maharashtra maharashtra is a significantly larger state they had won three more than us but if you look at it pro rata i think we have done exceedingly well compared to any other state in india not only has telangana improved its performance in information technology and industry we have also raised rapidly in agriculture and also environment again to give you a few numbers to take home our it exports back in 2014 for 57,000 crores. As of last year, June, it was 1,83,000 crore. And our agriculture, just to again, numbers is what, you know, uh, uh, is what makes the story credible. Back in 2014, the paddy production and procurement from Telangana was 68 lakh metric tons. As of last year, summer, the paddy production and procurement from Telangana is 3.5 crore tons. Agriculture has expanded by more than 119 percent industry has grown rapidly most of you are very familiar with tsi pass in fact all the women entrepreneurs here especially fiki flow when they had approached us and when they had asked us could we create something together telangana government and fiki flow could we do something unique for women entrepreneurs we readily accepted myself jayesh narsimha reddy all of us we jumped at the offer and we said we will do everything we can to support and as shubra pointed out we not only have given out the land at a very discounted price of course we also have ensured that all the women entrepreneurs have received all the support that they have required to set up their units but it's just the beginning in fact i know the ambition is larger the appetite is larger i have been asked many a times that we need to do more and you need more space in fact your president shubra just told me that she herself does not have a unit there and therefore she needs more space but i do have a request for the women entrepreneurs here let's start thinking beyond hyderabad let's start thinking outside of hyderabad i know you all live in hyderabad we all love hyderabad we're all proud hyderabadis and i keep saying wherever i go in fact my favorite pitch uh, whenever i meet a new investor is hyderabad is neither south india nor north india it is where the north of india meets the south of india it is where biryani meets paratha it is where you can say even paratha meets dosa it is where the mango verse meets metaverse it is where delta data sciences meets life sciences it is the point of confluence of so many things that are brilliant we have done exceedingly well as a city in fact 
Mercer, an international agency that rates all the cities on livability index, has consistently rated Hyderabad over the last five years as the best city among Indian cities on livability index for five years in a row, from 2015 until 2020. And since 2020, of course, they've stopped giving out rankings post-COVID. The point I'm trying to make is while Hyderabad is beautiful, while Hyderabad is in fact, in fact, Oxford Economics, in the uh, report they've released day before yesterday, have mentioned that Hyderabad and Bangalore are the two cities which are going to pip Tokyo, Shanghai, Shenzhen, and all other Asian cities, and will be the market leaders in the entire continent of Asia. So that is the capability of Hyderabad today. But having said all the nice things about Hyderabad, I think we don't want to end up the Bangalore way. We don't want to see our infrastructure crumbling. In the last eight and a half years, you all know the kind of work that has been done with respect to infrastructure addition and improvements. We have constructed a number of flyovers, a lot of underpasses, a lot of other infrastructure projects, a lot of link roads, and a lot of road maintenance that has happened. But I still see the number of cars and traffic growing more and more, especially after COVID. Therefore, I urge all of you, let's start thinking beyond Hyderabad, because as a state, if you look at us, Hyderabad is so central. Any nook and corner of Telangana is hardly two and a half to three hours away. So when you are planning your next industrial unit, because of the rural livelihood mission of Telangana government, five revolutions are going to unfold right in front of you. We are trying to usher in five revolutions. One, the green revolution that I just mentioned. Our irrigation chief, special chief secretary is here. We have constructed the world's largest lift irrigation project. You know, we take a lot of pride in quoting what others have done across the world. We talk about three gorges and other things. But did you know that the world's largest lift irrigation project is actually in our state, Telangana, and it has been completed in a record time of only four years, 48 months flat. It is an engineering marvel. For those of you who have not seen it, I request Shubra, Sonali, and others to actually lead a team of flow delegates to go visit this beautiful project where we literally lift a river from 60 meters above sea level all the way to 618 meters above sea level through a multi-stage lift irrigation system. It is an engineering marvel that is worth a visit, that is worth spreading the word. More importantly, it not only provides irrigation potential to more than 4.5 million acres, 45 lakh acres, it also provides drinking water to the city of Hyderabad. In fact, Hyderabad's drinking water requirements till the year of 2051 are fully met with by our government in the last four years. The point I'm trying to make is, with this kind of additional potential that has been created, with this kind of agriculture produce that is coming our way, food processing is a sector that is really going to take off in a big way in Telangana. We have earmarked 10,000 acres of land under the special food processing zone policy of government of Telangana. And I'm sure you all know that one third of these plots will be earmarked for women entrepreneurs. So you're more than happy to reach out to Jayesh Ranjan and my TSIC team. I urge you all to actually start setting up your units in these special food processing zones. The second revolution that is going to unfold right in front of your eyes is a blue revolution. Today I'm proud, I stand here proudly and claim that government of India has recognized us as the state which is number one today on inland fisheries. Today, our state has more than 46,000 lakes and tanks which have been rejuvenated, new reservoirs that have been created, offering you immense potential to start exporting aqua you know, food to other parts of the world. In fact, some large multinational companies are already setting up their factories and their processing units here, and they will be 100% export-oriented. Tilapia fish, which is predominantly consumed in the continent of the United States, in fact, will be shipped out of mid Maner in my district, Sirsila. And there is a large company called Fission, which is investing nearly 1,000 crores in this one unit alone. So the potential to invest in aquaculture, the potential to do more in this sector is immense. So I urge you all to also start looking at the blue revolution and the fruits of it. The third revolution that is also unfolding is pink revolution. Now, pink revolution is not my party revolution. Pink revolution is the meat processing industry that is prospering because of our focus on livestock development. The number of sheep in Telangana have more than doubled in the last four years because of the sheep rearing program our government has undertaken. Now, therefore, 
there's a huge scope to start exporting meat not only to the Middle East or Southeast Asia, but other parts of the world as well. I urge all of you also to start looking at the meat processing industry. Those of you who are vegetarian, you can still indulge in that business, by the way. The fourth revolution that I want to point out to you is the white revolution, the dairy revolution. Because of a number of initiatives, including an incentive of rupees four per liter uh, for, to, to actually uh, deliver milk to the state-owned Vijaya dairy, the milk production has also gone up in a big way in Telangana. So those of you who are looking at dairy or ancillary units in dairy or confectionery or nutraceuticals should seriously consider setting up a unit in rural areas in Telangana. And the last revolution I'll talk about, the fifth one, is a yellow revolution. The oil palm revolution that is also going to unfold right in front of our eyes. In the next five years, you'll see 20 lakh acres of oil palm being cultivated in Telangana. Edible oil dependence on other, uh, you know, other, other parts of the world is something that we want to do away with. So even oil palm is a huge opportunity for you to invest. Of course, the usual life sciences, you all know we are the vaccine capital of the world. We produce 9 billion doses of vaccines from Telangana. We are the vaccine capital, not of India, but we are the vaccine capital of the world. And I also must remind you, especially since this is a forum of women leaders and women entrepreneurs, two women who are leading the vaccine revolution from Telangana are Mahima Datla and Suchitra Ella, and you all should take a lot of pride, and you should walk in their footsteps as well. And the last thing I'll tell you, of course, is technology. I'm the Minister of Information Technology, and let me remind you that the cutting-edge opportunities in information technology, especially in the points of intersection, where technology intersects with other sectors. Say, for instance, you want to do something in healthcare. There is the huge opportunity today. Novartis does their digital drug discovery from Hyderabad. They have 9,000 people working out of Hyderabad. It's their second largest campus in the world. Of course, we have the Googles, the Apples, the Amazons, the Metas, Ubers, Salesforce, Micron, Qualcomm, all of their second largest campuses here. But what's more impressive is the innovation ecosystem, the startup ecosystem. So those of you who want to be startup entrepreneurs, we have your VHUB, which was an outcome like Amitabh Khan mentioned, of the GES, the Global Entrepreneurship Summit, which Amitabh ji and we all had organized together. The outcome of that event was we had announced on the last day that we will be setting up Women Entrepreneurs Hub. And today I'm proudly standing here and claiming we, we Hub is one of its kind in the country and no other state so far has been able to emulate it or copy it. But we can provide you access, we can provide you an opportunity to actually start exploring opportunities in the technology space as well. My humble request to Flo, to all the entrepreneurs here, and to all the business leaders and award winners here, please start thinking beyond Hyderabad. Please start thinking beyond our uh, uh, capital region. Because it is in your interest and also the state's interest to decongest this beautiful city of ours, to provide more local opportunities, to reduce attrition, to actually focus more on return on investment. So I wish the whole community of women entrepreneurs here all the very best. The state of Telangana stands with you as a partner and we look forward to a very fruitful and a very long journey. Thank you very much. Jai Telangana. <laughs>